Hey guys, so as part of my effort to go back and uh, do some of the rooms I didn't do videos for, uh, we're going to go ahead and do one of the uh, first rooms, Red Team Fundamentals. And then I'll put that in the playlist in the order that room is uh, supposed to be in. And at the end of the day, I just want to have all the Red Team rooms here so someone can follow all of my videos and get through every single one of those rooms. All right, so we'll just look over this intro. So here says uh, cybersecurity is a constant race between white hat hackers and black hat hackers. As threats in cybersecurity evolve, so does the need for more specialized services that allow companies to prepare for real world attacks the best they can. And then it just goes over some of the learning objectives here. Learn about the basic red team engagement, identify the main components and stakeholders involved in red team engagements, understand the main difference between red teaming and other types of cybersecurity engagements. And I will be providing you all the flags for this room. So let's go ahead and look at task two, which goes over a vulnerability assessments. With vulnerability assessments, you have penetration testing, and then it will give you some more, um, it'll give you a description of that. And then you have advanced persistent threats and why regular penetration testing isn't enough because um, when you're doing penetration testing like you, it mentions here you're allowed but when you're acting as apt advanced persistent threat uh, you're not going to be as loud you're going to use certain techniques tactics and procedures tactics techniques and procedures ttps and such so here let's see what the question is would vulnerability assessment prepare us to detect a real attack on the network and it would not. And vulnerability assessment can compose of quite a few things. Uh, vulnerability assessment can mean, you know, you're just doing an assessment to see what vulnerabilities are on the network, not exactly you're explaining them. You're just uh, annotating these findings. Uh, findings is a term that we use in cybersecurity for uh, security issues. And so a vulnerability assessment alone isn't, isn't enough to um, detect a real world attacker on you and prepares us to detect. Yeah, so that, that's not exactly true. Um, let's see here. Next, during a penetration test, are you concerned about being detected by the client? No. So during a penetration test, you're, you're pretty much throwing everything you got and hoping to um, get root or system level privileges. Um, for whatever machines you're trying to exploit um, and then annotate that in your findings, right? The more critical, the better. Um, so you're not exactly worried about, you know, being loud, being too loud. In fact, you may want to be loud because you're trying at the same time, you're testing the blue time, the blue team's ability to respond to uh, an incident, which is uh, currently ongoing as you're exploiting their network. So, you may hope that they actually detect you because if they don't, then they obviously need to work on uh, their seam detection and such. So let's see here next. Highly organized groups of skilled attackers are nowadays referred to as advanced persistent threats. So advanced persistent threats can be hacktivists. They can be nation states, usually nation states. They could be criminal organizations. Usually, usually they're going to be in nation states that are involved with criminal organizations and um, you know they have a lot of funding so typically nation states next task three red team engagement so here they go over you know the blue team what's their responsibility tactics techniques and procedures um, how when you're doing an assessment uh, or vulnerability or penetration testing um, they whoever you're testing may um, have specific flags that you're going to look for within your rules of engagement that you're supposed to look for a specific flag and then report it. So if you were to actually gain access to the internal network, um, let's say this server, or this uh, Linux box here, and say that's a Linux box, then you'd capture the flag right somewhat. Um, so we got social engineering. Yep, yep, yep. So let's go ahead and answer these questions. The goal of a red team engagement will often be referred to as flags or crown jewels, right? So you're looking for crown jewels or flags. 
During red team engagement, common methods used by attackers are emulating against the target. Such methods are usually called TTPs. What does TTP stand for? It stands for Tactics, Techniques, and Procedures. It's also a military term, so it's not just applicable to cybersecurity. It's, it's applicable to anything, you know, national security, um, and so on. The main objective of red team engagement is to detect as many vulnerabilities in as many hosts as possible. No, not exactly. You know, you could think of red teaming because you're, let's say you're an APT and you're trying to gain access to some um, defense network. And this defense network, they've got some secret plans to this, you know, next gen fighter or something of that sort. And so they're specifically looking for something in particular. They're not looking at, you know, Bob's uh, vacation trip uh, itinerary. You know, they're not interested in that. They're interested in, you know, the crown jewels here. So let's go to task four, teams and functions of an engagement. So you have your red cells, your blue cells, and white cells uh, when you're doing this engagement. Uh, white cells serve as referees. Um, also, I, I think they're called purple team as well, but I guess in in this term of rules of engagement, you're going to uh, specifically mention cells here. So red team leads, red team assistants, red team operators in their different roles and responsibilities here. And it says here, what cell is responsible for the offensive operation of engagement? And that's going to be the red cell, right? So red cells... Um, basically the red team as well you could mention it as, like that as well so red team assistant leads okay what's the next question what cell is the trusted agent considered part of so the trusted agent is considered to be white cells um so they control the engagement uh they monitor the rules of engagement make sure everyone's following the rules um so yeah We'll go ahead and go on to task five. And this is going to ask about engagement structure. So what you have here is you have Lockheed Martin, Kill Chain, although there's other um, Kill Chains out there. There's you know, Unified Kill Chain, you know. But Lockheed Martin, they've got a really good Kill Chain here, right? And so they break it down as reconnaissance, weaponization. Um, and weaponization, don't overcomplicate this, right? Think of it like this. If I take a toothbrush, right? Let's say I'm in jail and I have a toothbrush. And I uh, turn that toothbrush into a, a knife, a shank. Now I could go around and stab people, right? So it's essentially, I'm, I'm just breaking this down in like very simple, con very simple terms. Um, it's just taking something that's not meant to be a weapon, turning it into a weapon, right? So that's what you're doing. Um, and... You're using that weapon to exploit system, to you know, to gain remote access of it, right? And then how you deliver that weapon, because you're eh, it's typically kind of like snipes over your payload, right? Could be in the form of Word doc, could be a PDF, could be something else. Um, and then you deliver that, let's say via email, via USB. And then you um, exploit that vulnerability on the system, CVE, so and so gave me remote access to the system. Now I'm gonna go about installing my other tools so I can continue to enumerate Mimi Cats, you know, you know PowerShell Empire's got like a bunch of tools you can use. Um, you know, you got uh, Metasploit, MSF Venom, you know, you've got all these, these tools you can start installing that would help you gain more access. So command and control, you want to make sure that you can that you um, continue to have access. So you use a command and control framework. You've got like the moment I mentioned just now was uh, PowerShell Empire, Culpit Strike. They're all very good ones. And then actions on objectives. So you're looking for are you trying to exfil information? Maybe you're trying to blackmail the company? Are you trying to um, you know? encrypt their data so now um, they've got to pay you so it's, it's ransomware you know what's the end goal here um, so here if an adversary deployed meme cats on a target machine where would they be placed in the Lockheed Martin cyber kill chain 
So if we look at, you know, Mimikatz here, installation, right? That's where they would fall under installation. They're trying to install more tools. What technique um, purpose is to exploit the system to execute code? All right, so if you're trying to execute code, you know, it's gonna be exploit the system to execute code. That's gonna be the exploitation phase of when that CV actually, you know, uh, exploits that vulnerability, gains access to the system, right? Uh, yeah. So task six, all the things we discussed come together when performing a red team engagement. To better understand how the components and stakeholders interact, we'll analyze a simplified engagement example. So we just need to clean, uh, click on this green button here. All right, so white team, red teams will be defined the goals that align with the business risk scenarios. Blue team is usually not informed at this stage about the exercise as we want to analyze their natural response against an attacker next. The red team gathers as much information as they can about bank include technology and use, list of employees, information on social media, photos, any other usable information, threat intelligence. Threat intelligence stores are also used to check APTs, target similar companies to get a better grasp of TTPs and tools they use. As an example, you can check Cars Bank's information with all the information at hand. The red team will create a plan that includes several TTPs that fit the target and get it approved by the white team. Okay, next. The red team starts the engagement by emulating a phishing campaign against a list of emails they made based on employees' names found on LinkedIn and the tech patterns in their email addresses. Yeah, and usually you have your first and last name followed by you know the name of the company and um, .com. The phishing campaign was detected. The blue team sent an email to all employees to warn them of the ongoing threat. This is. This still allows the attacker to carry on as there was no process in place to check for possibly infected PCs or even delete any copies of malicious emails from all users' inboxes. Heck, and there's even CVEs out there that will you know, exploit Outlook and then require any user interaction. So yeah, that's pretty dangerous. Let's see what we got here. So it looks like they're dumping the LSA um, the SAM database there, and they're getting some credentials there as far as, um, you know, SAM key, sys key, and maybe they could crack those later or something. So let's go and see what we've got next. The red team uses bash to hack, hash attack against all hosts on the network to check if the backups users could log into other hosts, no direct connection could be made to the DB server as firewalls policies were in place to prevent it. After doing some additional recon, a workstation called DBAPC was identified using patch to hash. DBAPC was compromised and used as a pit point to connect to the DB server. While the patch to hash attempts triggers many alerts on login attempts from the user's backups, the red team ignores them and they were confused with a batch backup process which runs monthly okay so they they found their way into the db uh, server using patch that so they patch those credentials do, 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 here we go i was just reading over that all right in the end red and red white and blue team will check together how security controls can be improved in order to be ready for a real threat and then at the end, you get this little flag here. So if you take that flag, pop it in here, and you should get the raining confetti once you finish the conclusion. So um, this was a pretty easy one, you know. You know, later down the road, you will actually be carrying out an attack like this towards the end of the course, um, which is pretty cool. So let me go ahead and exit that. And I hope you enjoy this video. And if you uh, need any additional help, don't hesitate to drop a comment. If you like this video, don't hesitate to drop a comment. And hope you have a good day. All right, Danny out. Bye.